Well, hey there. How you doing? Dave Fenoy here. Another Wednesday. And here we are. Another Ask Dave Fenoy Anything. And uh, just want to thank you for stopping by. Uh, pop in. Say hello. A reminder that uh, all the Ask Dave Fenoy Anythings live on my YouTube channel, Dave Fenoy VoiceOver Training. Uh, and if you are interested in voiceover coaching from me, you can visit DaveFenoy.com. Click on the uh, Study VO tab and uh, book yourself one, five, ten, twenty, uh, and of course, uh, package deals when you get a little more. Uh, oh, first one up today there, Jim Frank, how are you? And away we go, Jeremy Adams, do it. Uh, hope to say uh, hello to uh, more of you as you join. But I want to say hello right now to our guest. Uh, Gillian Brashear, and there she is. Woohoo! Hello. hello, hello, bravo, bravo. Hey. My audience came in a little bit late there. Oh. There they are. Thank you, thank you, uh, seated audience. You know, you got to flash that applause sign. In. <laughs> yeah, good to see you. Nice to see you, Dave. So, uh, you know, I, I was mentioning as we were talking before, um, We've been acquainted for a while. I've been getting to know you over uh, a number of years here. Uh, we are both mutual friends of Randall Ryan. And uh, he has always spoken so highly of you uh, as a voiceover coach. And I said, well, you know, I, I, I've never had that experience of her. Uh, uh, but you guys have been uh, doing some teaching together. And uh, I have seen nothing but rave reviews about you and your teaching. So we're going to talk about some of that in a little bit. But first of all, uh, let's get some background. Where are you from? Where did you, <coughs> uh, how did you get started? Uh, where are you an actor and where? Okay, where I'm from, I'm born in a little town in Kansas, right from the belly button of the country. Ah, well, I'll say I'm from Cleveland, which I've always called the armpit of country and that makes sense i mean yeah you, it you, sadly it does <laughs> what's so? up i don't know where's texas <laughs> well that's where my mother's from spent a lot of time down there so um, yeah. uh from kansas and but you also were a new york actor yep i i did a lot of things before i realized that i actually had to go to new york it was sort of i was one of those people that was resisting the thing that i knew i needed to do until I finally went and did it. So then I, I went to New York, moved there, went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and um, changed my life. I, it was fantastic. Got into soap operas after that. And then not too long after that, moved to L.A. Okay. And, and did, the, did it all. Did it all. I, I looked at your IMDb today. Uh, and yeah, you, you really have done it all. Now... How did you get into uh, directing? Well, I directed on stage before, so I had some of that in me already. But if you want to know how I got into directing and uh, video games. Yes, absolutely. We'll circle back around to Mr. Randall Ryan. Okay. And I worked as an actor. I'd actually been in video games through him before. And one day we were just chatting on the phone, catching up. And he was like, boy, you know, it's a real shame that you don't know how to edit because I really need an editor. And I started thinking, well, why can't I? I mean, I edit every audition that I do. And, you know, at that point, I really, you know, was looking to pick up some work. So I started actually editing. So editing other people's performances in the games got me listening very closely to what everything everything that was going on and then I started sitting in on the actual directing sessions and then I started having you know secret things to say about them well what about this you know I might you know and so it was just this gradual way of getting into it that then I was invited to actually start directing and it took off from there oh boy now I know you have uh, been some t doing some teaching I think on your own and definitely with Randall um, what are the things that you share with an actor uh, to bring out a good performance? I know with GameVO Mexico 2023, we're going to start uh, with the fundamentals of acting. Um, what would you say some of those fundamentals are that will help uh, an aspiring uh, game actor, which is still actor, uh, mm -hmm. 
take the words on a page or screen and a microphone and get a cinematic oh. performance? You know, you, you have to use your imagination so much more, which is interesting. So if you have the core of acting study, you know, you understand your whole emotional instrument. Then you translate that into a scenario where you really have to imagine the other people there. And that's the key. I hear so many people so close to a great performance, but it's very presentational. They're, they're showing me what happens, but they're not really dropped into the event itself. And if you drop in, then I believe it and I'm on the ride with you. But in order to do that, you have to really believe with every fiber of your being that you're in the middle of whatever's going on, whether it's a war, whether it's a simple conversation, you know, whether it's, you know, rowing with your people across the cold and frigid icy river, you know, all of that comes through your belief of being in that situation. And so really it's about helping people um, with little clues and little triggers that work for them because it's different for every person as to what are the things that help them get into that place where they believe they're there. You know, that is that is so, so true. Uh, having been a, a coach now for a while, uh, you're always trying to find ways to reach uh, everybody, but yes, those individuals in a language, uh, in phrases, in in uh, that that get them to see what you're trying to do. There, there were have been over the years when I remember when I was uh, learning to be an actor, uh, being on microphone, and things that people would say, just throw it away, um, have fun with it. Uh, right. And I think for me, and I, I'm going to let you riff on this, so often uh, the actor has the wrong intention. Mm -hmm. You know, the intention yep. is, oh, I want to book this job. Yes. I want to show them that I understand what's going on. And mm -hmm. uh, I always find that that might be an outcome that you want, mm -hmm. but that shouldn't be your intention. Absolutely. It's it's that idea. And this is tricky because I think this comes also from working with some types of directors, me as an actor, having worked with some types of directors, where it's very uh, product oriented. We're going to we, we need the final thing right now, whereas acting is a is something that's a process. And so I, I find like when people can allow themselves to be in the process of it, they're able to let go a little bit of that, you know, expectation of, you know, everything's perfect in this moment and I'm, I'm tying it up in a great bow and look at this fantastic thing I made for you here. You know, when we're really in it, when an actor is really in it, you don't know. There's a part of you that actually doesn't know where it's going and doesn't know where it's going to end up. Wow. 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 You, um, I, I've, was having a student today, and this is not the only student that I've said this to, uh, but sometimes I'll demonstrate kind of what I mean, uh, that, oh, yeah, we have these words, we have to say them, but they're not the most important thing. They're just detail of uh, what this character is thinking and feeling. Uh, and I said, to be honest, if I have more than a couple lines, I don't know how they're going to come out. I don't plan how they're going to come out. All I want to do is be in character, reacting as this character would react, uh, thinking what they're thinking, feeling what they're feeling, and just letting that drive me. And more often than not, if I have two or three takes, they can be quite different, but still be okay. Mm -hmm. Still in the realm. Still, still in, in the, the realm. realm. Still living through the circumstances. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now as an actress, um, what were the things that you learned that maybe you, you, you learned as an actress, but maybe you didn't know as a director that you, you had to going from one to another? I think sometimes just because you can act well doesn't mean that you can direct well or even teach well. Some people, it's all empathy uh, yes. without understanding the technique. Um, 
how did you approach it as an actor? What, what, how would you approach a script? Well, you know, I learned a lesson a long time ago when I was directing on stage and, um, it was a hard lesson because it didn't go well. And it was that what's going on in my mind and the picture that I see isn't necessarily the voice of God. I'm not the voice of God. I'm the director, but I am not God in this whole scenario. What I'm really here to do is help promote you to have the experience that gets us to a place where we all go, wow, okay, that was it. You say that was it. I say that was it. Everybody around us goes, okay, we didn't know that was what we were going to get. And so there's, um, what I learned from that was trusting actors. And that's ultimately what I, I think I bring to it, having been one and still am one, is that I trust and I really listen to what they have and what they're bringing. And, and it's, I almost feel like it's, it's working on, uh, you know, was down at the National Hot Rod Association watching them work on those amazing cars, uh, you know, and, and it's just, it, it's about, there's this incredible vehicle that can do so much being the actor. I just need to do a little tune here, a little there, because I can hear you. You can't really hear you when you're performing, but I can hear where something might be missing. So it's just, where do you a, a, apply the question or the prompt to, to tune it into just to the right place? For the perfect now, performance. Yeah. I, I have a bunch of questions that I sit well, a bunch. I have five that I so that you can ask millions, but there are five that I always go for. When you're working with a, an actor, especially someone uh, that you're training, not necessarily directing, um, what are the questions that you suggest they ask themselves about the script, the character, and so forth? Well, a lot of that, you know, it depends on how much acting training somebody already has in, you know, in them. Um, you kind of know whether you can jump in with actor speak, but in the very basic way, what everybody really needs to know is, you know, who are you? Where are you? What are your relationships to the people that you're talking to? And what do you want? What do you want? There's no scene that is written without somebody needing something. And I think as actors, it's really easy just to be about our role, our role in something. But when you step back and look at why something was written, every scene is written to move the story along. There's a, it's a plot dry, driven you know, experience. So there's something happening in that scene and it's alive. There's something that must change or switch. That's why that scene was written. What, what part do you play in that? And it's about your wants and are you gonna get them? Everybody's wanting something different. Who you're talking to wants something different. How are you gonna work with that? Oh, great, great, great. Hey, listen, uh, everyone, I'd love for you to uh, give me your questions. Uh, that we can pull up here. Uh, oh, wait, wait, I got to bring up Jim Franck here. If you need a break, you can put me in, coach. <laughs> Jim was my guest last week when you were unavailable. Uh, and he's one of my students and also a, a working voice actor. And uh, he was he was just great. Uh, uh, let's say hello to Sarah. Uh, I love that drop-in versus presentational. Mm. being instead of showing mm -hmm. yeah i like that and that's what i'm gonna steal from you <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. um and uh let's see uh, richelieu to spot the difference uh i would that would take really acute insight um and what he was talking about spot the difference between the being and the presenting and and actually, when you're on the outside, I think it's pretty easy to spot uh, the presentation as opposed to the being. Mm -hmm. uh, often it's it's too loud, it's too contrived. Mm -hmm. uh, it's worried about oh, how do I say these words? Mm -hmm. uh, where do I put these pauses? Let me make sure I'm paying attention to uh, the the punctuation as opposed to being this character in this moment in time who's thinking this, feeling this, mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Don't mind my saying, I think Please. that's a process. I think that the, I, you know, to me, it's the difference between the mental and the emotional, but you have to go through the mental process with the script to a certain extent. You've got to work through the details of it, but then that's not your, your performance. Your performance is when you take all of that and then you actually get invested in it. You have to have stakes. You have to have internal stakes about what you're saying. And when you have stakes for what you're saying, we feel it. And when we feel it, that's when it's on. That's when you're on. That's when you're in it. Okay, I've got uh, Richelieu again here with a question. What percent of a good performance is cerebral versus instinctual? I currently learn lean heavily one way. Mm. I'm not sure what I would say about that. To me, so if I liken it to being on stage, which what's so interesting about stage acting is, you know, once it goes, you're on and you're in it. And you are there sometimes looking at yourself doing it. And then there's sometimes when you're actually really involved, you know, and you're kind of going in and out. So for me, you know, with that question, it's, it's sometimes both. The goal is for it to really be a dropped in experience, you know, where you're living through it. Sometimes that doesn't always happen. And sometimes we move in and out of it. And there's no reason to beat yourself up for it. You know, you come back and, you know, you approach it and do it again. I think that depends on what we're talking about here. If you're talking about an audition, you know, try to move away from the cerebral experience and get into the emotional experience more because that's where you'll shine. That's when I'm listening to auditions, there are less people giving an emotional, emotionally dialed in performance than there are people be giving cerebral reads. You know, uh, that was a good question because it led someplace. I'm not sure uh, he meant for it to lead. I know for me, uh, there are characters that I have played uh, that I'm really invested in. I'm, I'm in their head, in their heart, in their feeling. And sometimes it's more technical. I'm playing something kind of stereotypical that is more uh, based on the voice and the attitude of a character that's fairly narrow. Uh, and you can kind of, uh, oh, 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 let me deliver. Uh, and it's enough and it works. Mm-hmm. Uh, not necessarily my favorite kind of work, but you know we're all in this, uh, not only for the enjoyment of the work, but to make a living. Uh, so uh, we accept those jobs, and I notice that all my favorite actors have uh, been in some dogs from time to time. And I have to say, uh, I've been in some dogs in terms of uh, some games. But you, for me as an actor, I live uh, for those meaty roles, uh, for that complicated character uh, that is not just simple, not a stereotype. Mm-hmm. Um how do you get good enough, A, to, to just be able to, okay, ho oh, oh, this is this character, let me just do this, and still make it believable, real, uh, enjoyable for the, 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 the person playing the game or having uh, enjoying the acting experience, uh, and find yourself being able to step out of that and really grab the meat? Mm. Um. I want to, I know I'm going to change this a little bit from what you're asking about that, but I, but I want to say, you know, part of what's interesting too, is that you have several characters, two or three in a game, and there's one that you really get, and it is meaty and, and fantastic, and you're living through it, but you've got to pick out, pick up two or three more, because that's your job to grab a couple of, you don't identify it. You know, that, that's a perfect, perfect and example, perfect example. You just got to make it work. But I think the thing is, is anything, even when it's, you know, like, you know, something's, you know, just like a fight character, right? You know, that there's something in there. There's something that you can grab on. Like, you know, maybe it's seemingly, you know, one dimensional even, but there's some way where you actually make it real. Like when you're snaring and you're, you're, you know, antagonizing somebody that you get into it and you really get into it and you, and it's fun. And I think when you're when you're having fun with it, we're having fun as well. And that's what 
that the whole reason people are enjoying games is to give them an experience that they're not having in everyday life. And a part of that is just the fun of the performances brings a rise in them. Yeah, you you had uh, mentioned um, something before about, uh, you know, being in it and not being in it. Um, and you talked about the work beforehand and then the performance after. And uh, uh, so we were talking before we got started. I, I, I think most of us as uh, coaches are saying many of the same things using different words uh, and trying to, okay, now how can I explain this to this person? Uh, but getting in it, uh, when you were just talking about uh, some of those characters, uh, I'll often say, well, you know, when you're doing the, they went that away guy, Mm-hmm. You don't have to try to make that important, right? Uh, you just have yeah. to make it believe. Oh, they went that away, and and you're right. done. It's good. But when you're working on that character uh, that has thoughts, actions, relationships, things that they want, things they're afraid of, and all these things uh, are are coming to fore, I always tell people, look, you got to do that work before you step to the mic. It's internalize that, uh, be familiar enough with the script, uh, know who this character is at their core, and then what, they, what they're what they doing in this, this scene, you know, what are they reacting to, thinking, feeling, doing, the relationship. But once you've got it, stop thinking about it and let it go and then just do it. Yes, absolutely. Without a doubt. But the preparation is key. It's not really any different than if you're um, uh, playing an instrument. You know, you practice, you practice and you practice and you make the mistakes and you, you know, you, you, you hate it and then you love it. You know, like I'm not getting it. Then, oh, my God, I got it. You know, and then you let all of that go and you trust. There's this element of trust that, you know, whatever's going to come out in the moment is going to be appropriate. I don't know about you. I often uh, tell my students that acting is a feeling. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I liken it, you, you just kind of reminded me, I, I liken it to being a musician or being an athlete. Uh, and there are things that you practice uh, to get them down to the point that you don't have to think about it. You're playing those scales nice and slow, getting your technique down mm-hmm. uh, so that at some point you don't have to think about it. You can just be, oh, oh, guess who has joined us? Mr. <laughs> Randall Ryan. <laughs> You've directed uh, theater, film, and VO. What have you learned from each that actors can bring to VO, especially gaming? You, leave it to Randall to ask a great question. <laughs> uh, well, you know, theater is the physicality, I would say. And thinking on your toes. You, you know, you once you're out there, you know, people are watching. You got to bring it. It's not a whole bunch of new takes. Uh, what was the next one? Tell oh, oh, I left it up or, there. Uh, what have you learned from each that actors can bring to VO, especially gaming, theater, film, and VO? Well, they can bring to gaming. They're all the same in, in that it's all acting. I mean, you know, the circumstances that each one gives you in, that you're going to play, you're in a different field, per se, in each one. But it's all... You know, it's all where you are. It's all your relationships. It's all who you are and what you want. Um, I just I can't stress that enough. And I actually think that that's the, the, the tragedy in some ways for the, the VO actor is, is that you don't have anybody to play with. And that's really the problem. Is it when There's a so dirty much... joke in there someplace, but far <laughs> be it from me. To... You got to play with yourself, but you know. <laughs> But, it, you know, it's so many of these things get worked out when you have a real person to work off of. You know, it's a, the rehearsal process is there because it's so rich with what it gives you. And and I think when we're by ourselves, we cheat ourselves of the rehearsal process because we, we can't get there on our own or it's hard to. Or know, harder takes, to. It, well, it, it takes more discipline to get there on your own. You know, so yeah. it's the reason you work out with somebody else. Uh, yeah. because you know, you, you're working out and you want, you want them to see that you're doing your thing. They want you to see that they're doing their thing. And so you're kind of pushing each other. Uh, yeah. sometimes I just call it, we get a little lazy 
Yeah. Uh, when we've got a script in front of us and it's just us, and uh, you feel like, oh, you know, oh yeah, let me just let me just read this. I I, I don't want to do all the work. Right. Right. Uh, but and I always say, look, uh, we are doing the same thing. We got words on a page or screen and a microphone, but you have to bring the same motion, even if it's truncated. Uh, the same mm -hmm. looks on your face, the same slump in your body. Uh, if you're mm -hmm. being sleepy, the same yawn. Let's see, uh, Nevin Stoltz. Uh, do you have any specific tricks or techniques to help actors connect with a character? when they are struggling? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think we yeah. all go through that from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, I think every character has its own thing, it, uh, their, uh, its own key. Some people, uh, some characters, it's an emotional key. Sometimes it's a physicality. Sometimes it's an illness, which is the way to dive into somebody. Um, I think there are just so many things. So I would probably ask myself the question about a character is, is when you think of the character, do you think of them as, you know, having a particular emotional tone to them? As, you know, base, the base tone, like more of an angry person, you know, an aggressive person, you know, more of a submissive person and start there. Look at like opposite feelings and dial it in like that, you know, chart it out. Well, you know, he's aggressive, but you know, he's weak with his mother, you know, certain things like that and paint it out. But every character, again, I think is a little bit different in that, you know, you have that, but it might be if you start experimenting with a physicality, you know, there was a, uh, Michael Chekhov was a phenomenal acting teacher. I'm going to say he was in the 30s, maybe 20s. And he had this idea about the, an emotional gesture. And he said every character you could really get to if you could just determine what the gesture was, whether he's somebody that points every time he says something or somebody who's doing, you know, maybe that's like this, whatever the gesture might be, which, but it's, it's even more specific than just general physicality is that this is the way a character comes back to their state of being over and over again and there'd be one gesture that speaks to them and i think that's an amazing tool for a vo actor uh it's interesting we uh when i had aaron fitzgerald who will be joining us at game vo mexico 2023 a couple of weeks ago uh she talked about the physicality and sometimes uh physicality that is uh, there's per, uh, maybe a deformity or leaning in a particular way or, or walking a certain way. Um, and I notice we look at people's faces, and as a matter of fact, the older we get and how we smile or frown uh, or, or show up in the world might make our face, the, the wrinkles that we get uh, or a lopsided face or I play tennis and uh, for a long time uh, my right, uh, forearm was bigger than my left forearm from, from hitting the tennis ball. Um, and I love what you just said about how does a person gesture? Because we all gesture differently. And if you can find that, uh, something about that character, how they, how they look at the world, mm -hmm. um, uh, do they confront it or do they look mm -hmm. first? Things that are, oh, good, good, good stuff. Uh, all right. Uh, Golda Rachel Perry, the lack of physical set and scene partner makes voice acting require more in the moment imagination than stage or screen. I absolutely agree with you. And I, I, I bet my guest Gillian does too. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. You have to be incredibly in the moment. I didn't. I, I, I always say, well, look, um, take your imagination to, well, what does the scene look like? What the place that you're in? What are you wearing? Mm -hmm. You know, or uh, put yourself in costume. Mm -hmm. uh, all those things. Let's see. What does Jeremy Adams have to say? What kind of physical themes, things have you seen character actors do to get into their performances? Oh, well, it's funny. I was just about to mention that. I was trying to remember who it was. Uh... Jeez, I can't. I want to say it was Pacino, but I don't know for exactly. But it was about the shoes. 
he knew he found the character when he got the right shoes and he wore those shoes to every rehearsal. Something as simple as that, you know, it's taking the outside world. We can approach a character in two ways. You work from the inside out or the outside in. So finding the, the clothing is a way to go outside in that then feeds to who this person is. And you start finding a way to work with the lines because you're wearing the shoes. You're literally walking in his footsteps, so to speak. And, and once again, uh, in so many ways, I don't want to say it is easier, it's different, but we'll say a little bit easier when you're on stage on camera and you are putting on those shoes physically, putting on those clothes, the makeup, the hair, all those things that allow you to be this character. We just have to imagine it. Mm. Uh, and I, I, I find with my students, I will ask them, well, you know, what are you wearing? Mm -hmm. uh, what does this character look like? When's the last time they bathed? Mm -hmm. um, all those kinds of things. Let's see. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Lori Allen, uh, one of the best of the best. So helpful. Uh, and something else I find that good actors really enjoy uh, good acting tips. Because we always have to remind ourselves. All the time. Uh, let's see. All the time. Uh, uh, okay. Have you seen any weirdly specific physical things from actors as they try to get into their performances? Oh, good question. Weirdly. And, um, and you know, you might not working with yeah. voice actors from a distance because so yeah. many of us are working from our own home studios. You might not actually see. Uh, what they're doing. Interestingly enough, usually we don't uh, over Skype. We tend to have the cameras off. But funny enough, um, last week I was directing a session and they had the camera on and I decided to leave it on. And I just, you know, because I thought it was incredibly informative. And this, it was a woman actress and she was embodying, you know, a warrior type and everything, every time she spoke, didn't she, she had this going on. She delivered her lines like this. And, and it I brought think, and it brought uh, it. Yeah, I would never have known that. We, you know, yeah. the camera was on. Uh, a question for you. How <laughs> what do you tell your students when this is happening to them? How uh, comes that word? How I hope uh, I get this line right and gee, uh, I, I think I should say this word like that. Oh, let me underline it. Do you think they're going to like my How do, how do you quiet that voice? Um you know what, it, what it, I think it's good to understand that we all have that voice. We all do. It's something we, I, any artist deals with all the time across every platform. I don't care if you're writing a script. I don't care if you're making some music. There's something about here, you know, going, ah, can it be better? Is it right? How's this going to come out? Um, and I honestly believe that the way to overcome that really is the repetition. Because I've had that, I, you know, stage is terrifying, frankly. And the only way to get to the place where you're, you're able to get up and do it is that you've just rehearsed enough that you finally go, you know what, whatever happens, happens, and it's gonna be fine. And nothing's gonna be perfect. There are no perfect performances. There really aren't. There are people redo takes in VO all the time. Man, I, I, didn't, I didn't like that. Let me do it, try it again. Or, you know, what if we rework that? It's like, take the pressure <laughs> off, it's all okay. As a matter of fact, not only redo takes, you start off redoing takes by giving the, oh, give me uh, two takes or give me three takes of this particular line and we'll go, we'll pick the one we like or then we'll do it again. Yeah, <laughs> we, we uh, you know, give ourselves <coughs> a big spin on it. But when you, once you get in there and you get working, I think all of that goes away because it's teamwork. A yeah. performance really is teamwork. A and I think if you are prepared, there's a lot less of this. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, re I remember my days in theater and the times that I really, this was really going on was when I knew <laughs> I hadn't memorized this script as well as I should have. Oh, and yeah. gee, am I going to make a mistake? And what's that line coming? And you can't, you can't hide yeah. uh, those thoughts. Uh, and whatever you're thinking, feeling, especially if it's got, just got a little too much power, it's going to show up in your performance. Yeah. Yeah. 
Let's see, Theo Mezzacapo, I think having or developing a sense of compassion and empathy is very important for any actor. With those mm-hmm. things, it's easier to allow yourself to inhabit any character you're given because you're capable of seeing the world from a different perspective, especially those that are polar opposite of your own. Nice. Thought? I agree with you. I think think being empathetic to the human condition is the ultimate actor tool. And I, I leave it at that. Uh, well, I have to agree. And Theo, uh, thumbs up, my man. Thumbs up. Uh, let's see. Mike Cunningham, I watch myself on video when I perform and I realize I have a tick where I touch my beard. I imagine lots of people do something comforting like that. You know, And but if it's... If it is the, a tick that the character has of touching their beard, that's one thing. If it's a tick that you have that's comforting yourself or that happens when you're feeling a certain way, it may or may not uh, bother the character, I believe. Your thought? I mean, we don't see it. So there's, you know, but I think, yeah, the real the real question there is, if this is something that you're doing because you're uncomfortable with something, if this is your indication that something isn't quite right for you, then it's about finding out what's behind that. Why do you do that? Um, but, you know, but it also might be great for a character as well. I found uh, years ago, and I don't remember what it was exactly, but I had developed some thing, mm-hmm. uh, some thing that I would do. Uh, I would, uh, after, after I realized what it was, oh, okay, I'm doing that Davism again. Uh, yeah. That you just, you know, it worked for you in something. Uh, somebody liked it. Somebody mentioned it. And now you're you're trying to come back to that. But after a while, you realize that's not going to work on everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I remember, uh, well, he's out of favor now, but uh, Will Smith, uh, when he did The Pursuit of Happiness, uh, the director said, look. I don't want any Will Smithisms. I, I I don't want your laugh. I don't want the way you say things as Will Smith, the movie star. I want Will Smith, the actor. I I want Will Smith to be this character, um, uh, not the kind of cartoon, uh, big character that you play in your huge movies. Um, and I think we all have to guard against that. Um, mm-hmm. I've been fortunate. I, I get enough variety of character that uh, I, I have to get pulled out of those kinds of things. I think that, um, you know, there's personality, right? We have our own personality traits, but, but the ultimate, if we, love, we talk about the ultimate space for an actor is truly to be the blank slate. Yeah. Can you act, let go of the stuff of your, personality stuff to really allow this being to inhabit somebody else. You know, let's, let's talk a little bit about acting exercises that we would probably never do uh, for voiceover because we're on mic with words on a page. Um, I remember uh, I was a theater major many, many, many years ago and doing exercises where you are just very close to one another, uh, uncomfortably close outside, closer in, <coughs> excuse me, than that. Uh, typically, it's a few feet apart and we're comfortable, but no, now we're like right here or yes. we're mirroring each other oh. mm-hmm. uh, or just touching somebody or just looking in their eyes without saying anything, but but maintaining that. Have you ever, have you ever thought, and I'm, this, I'm just spitballing here, have you ever thought of, yeah. of, of any of those things to bring to voice actors yes. for us to, and, and I know when we're down in Mexico, we will be able to do some of those things, uh, but sometimes I think that will help for us to learn to connect even when we're not connected? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, I think that stuff's, uh, you know, it's the baseline 
of what we do because it you know we we grow up as as people and we start acquiring the things that we do to protect ourselves and go out into the world and relate to the world and and we're you know constantly negotiating what was successful what wasn't successful and you know after a while there are layers of armor if you want to call them but in order to do this craft well you really have to be able to identify your armor and and have the space it's like just having the space where somebody asks you can you let that go can you just let that go like in this space right here we're gonna check that at the door and and that's gonna... terrifying yeah it is because we have that's not what we do yeah but terrifying space of letting all that go is where the gold is and you, know, and you know what? I I find that despite the fact that we aren't putting people face to face and telling them 30 seconds, you got to stay there staring at each other, um, that people are still very afraid mm -hmm. uh, to allow another character to speak through them, to go for that yell or that cry. Uh, because they're, how am I going to be judged? Uh, mm -hmm. am I going to look silly? What, what, what will people think of me? And my answer is always, look, if you give a great performance, they're going to think you're wonderful. Um, if you don't get there, well, they may not think you're a terrible person, but they're not going to think, oh, this is, this is the person that should be working uh, as an actor. Right. Well, we are trained up through, you know, society to control our emotions, you know, to, we've got to all get along. So you can't just run the muck or run amok with, with your emotions, but that's what we treasure in the artists is their ability to tap into the emotions that we don't actually express out in the real world anymore. So the more that you say, okay, I'm willing to go there. Hang on, everybody. Here we go. And bring that bad boy out, whatever it is, you know, the deep, the ugly, the rich, you know, the anger, the lust, the, the anguish. That's what everybody's going, oh, thank God somebody, somebody's having that experience because I feel that inside. <laughs> I don't get to express it. Oh, boy. Uh, Nevin Stoltz again with all the different acting schools of thought out there. Is there no. one specific style technique you prefer or feel works best for VO? That's a, I like that question, Nevin. Mm. I don't know about that. I think I, I have not in myself ascertained that one thing is better for VO per se. I, you know, cause when I went to school, I learned from a lot of schools of thought. And so for me, it's what the situation calls for. Do I need a moment before, do I need to, you know, figure out like, okay, my, this, the scene is starting here with my character already in this state. What do I have to pretend happened right before to get me to the place where I'm already right here? So that's one technique, right? You know, and then you've, unfortunately, I, that probably is one of the best, I would say, for BO right there. Because a lot of the other ones really depend on somebody else to work on, yeah. you know, work off of. But that is really, you know, something that is you, it's you and you're calling. Sometimes you don't need to, you know, it's just imagination. Sometimes you need to call on an emotional memory from your own life yeah. to get there. And honestly, emotional recall. I mean, that's. Well, you know, you know we, we need a starting point. I always, uh, if, if we're in dialogue and perhaps a dialogue starts with our character, mm -hmm. I always ask my students, well, what just happened or what was just said that your character is responding to yeah. and so often uh your character might be sa saying something like yeah i'm really hungry too well it'd be easy to imagine somebody said you know i'm hungry yeah well i'm really hungry too. and yeah not a big emotional scene mm -hmm. but you have a starting point yes right Ooh. How did that pop up there? Uh, something just popped on my screen in front of me. Let's get rid of that. There, it's gone. All right. Uh, da -da 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 -da. 
Uh, Sarah Tindall again, at least they know you're not afraid to go there. Yeah. Well, that's that's from a couple of uh, conversations before. Um, yeah. And I think so often we've lost that, that childlike willingness to just play uh, at, with, without the feeling of being judged. Uh, that sometimes I see little kids uh, and I, I often say, look, this is fun. Get mm-hmm. back your 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 sense of of play and joy uh, mm-hmm. that allow you to go anywhere and not worry about it. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Vio Mexico. Let me see. Okay, let's do it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Um, Game Vio Mexico 2023, April 27th through 30th, Acamal, Mexico. Um, mm-hmm. Myself, Randall Ryan, Aaron Fitzgerald, Mark Esdale, and Gillian Brashear. And you got to go uh, to London. Uh, you were working, uh, I think, with Randall on mm-hmm. teaching a class that involved yeah. Mark Esdale. What was that like? Uh, well, actually, we taught a class in London, but Mark Esdale was on our podcast. Ah. Let's over. And so we spent time. It was wonderful. We spent time in his studio and he he took me through how he works with an actor there. And honestly, I don't see anybody else working like that. It's incredibly unique. Uh, I loved it. Did did he talk about the spies? Which spies are we talking about? Oh, no. He he, he had read a book about a a, a spy uh, who talked about being a spy as acting and that it's all improvisation. Uh, but it's improvisation, uh, not for money, but life or death. Uh, because you are playing somebody else. You are not yourself. You are playing somebody else. And in the moment, you have yeah. to react to whatever stimuli is coming. Uh, mm-hmm. And I know he's going to be talking about that a bit uh, when we're down in Mexico. Um, he and I have had great debates. He's one of my best friends. I love him dearly, but we have great debates um, about acting style and, and getting into character and how much preparation you need. Uh, he very much will go, oh, yeah, just here, here's a copy. Go for it. You're yeah. this character. Now go for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he, he, what's the first read? Don't give me anything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he's the guy that likes... Uh, demos with no music or 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 sound of any kind, just just the actor. Uh, but a great director. He's directed hundreds of video games. Looking forward to uh, per year, hundreds yeah. per year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Fantastic. But anyway, yeah. uh, yes. there are still openings. We're looking for fourteen students. Uh, we are going to start with the basics of acting. Um, you will be taking classes with all of us. Uh, and uh, we're going to go from acting basics and how they relate to video games uh, to simulated sessions. Uh, and we are going to have people also, you're going to have to learn how to critique and do a little directing yourself. Because we're living in a world now where we're all doing uh, auditions at home. And uh, the best way to learn how to uh, direct yourself is by developing the sensitivity and skill to direct somebody else. So uh, you're going to come away with not only being a much better actor, and we promise that, uh, but you're going to be a little bit of a director, too, because you're going to learn how to direct yourself. Uh Let's see. Randall Ryan here again. I'll put him right there. Let's talk voiceover.com. That is your podcast. When is it on? Or it's a podcast. You can go through it anytime. Yeah, that's right. You can find it. I'm sure all the places you can find podcasts, but you can also find it at our website, which is the voicedirector.world. Uh, ah, there you go. And uh, let's see. Oh, Golda Rachel Perry was there for that particular podcast. Yeah, Mark is just a delight, uh, and uh, can't wait to to uh, be there with him. 
Haven't seen him in a little, a little while. Last time uh, I think he was here. A um, couple months ago. A couple months ago, yeah. Right. And, uh, and the L.A. voice, uh, some word, something. You were there. Uh, you know what? I'm getting, I'm getting to the point here. I've been to so many conferences, I can't remember. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. Who has another question here? Uh, Golda, Rachel Perry, Randall, and Gillian's podcast, Let's Talk VoiceOver. Mark Estale was interviewed uh, on one episode. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, Jim Frank, Sovas. I think he might have been there, but I, think it, I actually think he was there for... Uh, Devon, yes. let get your game yeah. on. That's, That's what right. it was. Let's That's get your game on. Uh, yeah. And sitting at a table with he and I and uh, a few other uh, directors and voice actors uh, way in the back and making faces and having fun. Yeah. Do doing things we had no business doing. Uh, <laughs> Sarah what I'm excited about for uh, Game VO Mexico, uh -huh. what I think provides um, as an actor, it's it's that space to to really work through some of these intrinsic things that there is no other place to do it for voice actors in particular. There, I don't see any other place to really strip it all off, really work on your true acting technique, and then and then start experimenting, layering characters on, finding characters that you do that really easy, that you can go to all of the time. Um, and then work through a script as if you're in session, and, you know, and working doing, with other people. Doing oh. the script analysis. Yes. Uh, getting yep. away from, oh, if I say it like this and I hit that word and I put my comma there, and uh, mm -hmm. that for so long voiceover was taught with that oh underline this you know and so yes. forth and so as opposed to who are you what are you thinking what are you feeling what are you doing what are you reacting to mm -hmm. uh what, what's the relationship you have with that person you're talking to uh what's the space you are in mm -hmm. uh all all those questions let me get to Sarah Tyndall again. Randall Ryan, ha ha, thanks. I was late to the party. Okay. Um, one of the things I love about this, there are conversations going on between people. Uh, <laughs> uh, Richard Lou Hoff Jr., over, over self-directing question. Are there tells when you're doing too much? Well, doing too much is, you know, it's inauthentic. I, you know, I think that's sort of a, the through line that we've been talking about. You tend to be a little too big, a little too forceful, um, a little too animated, you know, is what I find. That's pretty yeah. much the tell. You know, you've got, you're the, you, they went that away. Oh, they went that away. They yeah. went that away. <laughs> uh, you know, I, and that's kind of an example, you know, um, I used to say from time to time that acting was like a recipe and you can put too much salt, too much sugar in, you know, and, and what you're looking for is a believable performance. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to prove anything to anybody. Uh, you're, you're, you want to take the words off the page and be this character in this moment in time that fits in the world that you're living in mm -hmm. or that your character is living in. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see. Oh, Myron, how are you? Question. Great show, Dave. Gillian, what do you look for in a demo? Great question. Can we submit to you or do you prefer an agent to reach out to you? Thanks. Uh, you can submit to me, Gillian, at hamsterballstudios.com. I'd be more than delighted to receive your demo. And uh, what do you look for in a demo? I look, I don't look for fancy stuff per se. I look for whether you believe that you're the character and that's really it. Whatever characters you're choosing, it's, do you believe that you are that character that will come through? That means more to me than anything. That's the, that to me is the thing where I go, Hmm, that would be really interesting to give that person a try. So it's not about the voices. It's about the choices. Oh, I like that. 
Something else I'm going to steal. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't have it's, one. <laughs> it's not about the voices. It's the choices. I like that. <laughs> Damn it, I'm trademarking it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I know. People have stolen enough stuff from me. I, I got to steal something. I, 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 I stole from Mark Estale. This is the exhaust of the acting engine. <laughs> I, I've got a lot of mileage out of that because uh, so many people, it's like, if I say it like this and I put this comma right here and then a pause and then pick it up again now i am acting yes and uh it's it's like no let it go uh, <laughs> uh trying to make the words too important uh yes. they're, they're just they're right. just part of the show just part right. of the show words are the vehicle for you to get your point across to yeah. get your feeling to get your intention across What's the toughest directing job you've ever done uh, because trying to get it across to an actor? And what did you finally do if you were able to get across to the actor what they should be doing? You know, it's a fine line, I'll tell you, because you it's asking for something in one way and not getting it. So you just trying a different, trying different tacks, but it's so trying to still stay, stay supportive. So you don't want the actor feeling like, oh my God, I'm getting it wrong. I particularly go for the approach of, what if this, what if this were happening? What about this idea? You know, what if she or he were, were doing this? And, but then at a certain point, you gotta hope you got what you got and you gotta move on because time, you only have so many chances and it's like, we got to move on. And in my mind, I'm thinking about, okay, well, that can be edited. And maybe I can put this take at the beginning of this take together with the end of that one. And that will probably get me what I, what I need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. And I, I think we all, I hope we all, not just me, <laughs> uh, have, have had, have had that experience. I remember years ago I was on a cartoon. And uh, I had done my main character, and they they were asking me to do this alternate character. And I must have gone through about eight or nine voices, character types that were in my my bag of tricks, and none of them. No, they the, the director just wasn't liking any of. Them. And I remember the feeling of dread and failure, and I'm never going to work in this business again. I, I'm an imposter all the go. And of course, they hired me back and I continue to work. Um, but you have to be careful, I think, sometimes how actors, are, how, how you speak to an actor. Uh, mm -hmm. I know we are sensitive. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're actors. That's why we're actors. And, and uh, yeah. I don't know about you, but I've heard the stories of people who didn't get a call back after a gig or were replaced after a gig. And all too often it's somebody who their demo was fantastic because it was Frankenstein together. Uh, and their auditions may have been Frankenstein together. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if you come to VO, uh, Game VO Mexico 2023, I promise you, you will not have to Frankenstein an audition together or a demo together uh, you're going to come away with a really good foundation not just of voice acting for video games that ostensibly is what we're looking at but uh, guess who they're hiring to do uh, the dubbing of all these shows now it's video game actors that's right uh, this will yeah. open up worlds for you uh, mm -hmm. as a voice actor and I have always found that voice acting for games, because it's closer to on stage, on camera, has helped me with commercial and narration. Uh, mm -hmm. Because instead of, oh, I'm doing this style and this, uh, there may be a bit of that. No, I'm this character with this worldview uh, that is saying this, this is what, uh, saying these things that they believe. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think what's nice about VO Mexico is you'll get to that place where you're feeling that character, 
But so I want to speak a little bit to, yes, sure, somebody who's Frankenstein together their auditions and Frankenstein together um, uh, their demo. There are also people who put things together and they have that, but they've never done a job. Yeah. And so they actually can act, but they've never actually done a session. And the session is actually terrifying because they don't know what's expected of them. Yeah. It, session is different than anything you've ever done as an actor. It's incredibly different. So that in itself, to be able to experience that on that Hence weekend. our simulated sessions. Yeah, uh, exactly. Where, where you will go through that. Uh, Gillian, uh, our hour is up. I always try to okay. uh, not uh, break my promise of 7 o'clock. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, voice choice vo choices not voices I'm, I'm, I'm still not. you said one before I'll have to go back and listen to, to grab that one but choices not voices uh, that one's mine now um, okay. or I'll give you credit I'll give you credit uh, but fantastic w wonderful to have you on uh, and uh, what is that email address uh, for people to reach you if they sure. would like to Gillian at Hamster Ball Studios. Oh, sorry, I said the wrong. I said the wrong thing, didn't I, Randy? He's probably going. No, that's not our. That's not it. No, no, I gave you two different ones. Okay, sorry, I gave two different. <laughs> if you want to see LTVO, this is what I'm working out of my mind. If you want to see LTVO episodes, that's at thevoicedirector.world. If you want to send a demo, that's Gillian at hamsterballstudios.com. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Gillian at Hamster Studios, Hamster Balls, Ball Studios. Hamster Ball Studios dot com to dot send com. demos and yes. to see and the L yeah. And for the podcast, you can find that at the voice director dot world, the voice director dot world. There we go. Well, Gillian, uh, I'll probably see you before, but definitely see you yeah. down in Mexico. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, VO, Game VO you. Mexico 2023. Uh, Gillian Brashear, uh, thank you. Uh, all the best, and uh, I will talk to you soon. All right. Good luck, everybody. Hey, Gillian Brashear, everybody. And just like always, uh, this Ask Dave Fenoy Anything will be living at uh, my YouTube channel, Dave Fenoy VoiceOver Training. Uh, and if you are interested in voiceover coaching with me, Dave com. Click on the uh, study VO tab at the top. And some of you uh, may have found that, gee, if I was on Twitter, maybe this was showing up on Twitter. If you were on LinkedIn, maybe this was showing up on LinkedIn. Um, the, the streaming service I use now allows me to stream to more places at the same time. Uh, and as the weeks go on, uh, it will not just be Facebook, but it'll be Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and LinkedIn uh, and a few other places. So uh, as we test and find out more, you'll find out more. Uh, so uh, knock on wood and uh, hope this thing works. Technology doesn't always do what I want it to do. That said, all the best. And, you know, book something.